Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tim McCone. Developing news in Sudbury. A driver is in the hospital with serious injuries after a head-on collision with a school bus. Algonquin students were on board at the time of the accident. Nine of them, along with the bus driver, were taken to the hospital with minor injuries. Catherine Sotnik has more. Close to a dozen injured, including girls on a high school rugby team after a school bus and car collide on Concord Road in Sudbury just before 4 o'clock. All of a sudden, I felt like a quick stop, and then I was like half asleep, and then I just felt like a really quick, like a really like hard stop, and I heard like this shattering glass noise, and I like went for it, and then my head smashed against like the back of the window. One player named Catherine left the Framingham Hospital ER with a neck brace in hand. She's part of the Algonquin Regional High School rugby team in Northborough. She says the team was one minute away from the Lincoln Sudbury High School where they were playing a match when the two collided. Like I think like the scariest part was either the sound of like a lot of people were like, oh my God, what happened? And then I just remember um, my coach who actually like works as a nurse was running down like the stairs of the bus and screamed, someone call 911, someone call 911. Police say in total, nine kids on the bus were hurt, five sent to the hospital, along with the bus driver for minor injuries like whiplash, shoulder injuries, and for fear that one kid had a concussion. The driver of the Cadillac in the crash is a 73-year-old woman from Sudbury. She was med-flighted to Beth Israel Hospital in Boston, police say, after she was removed from her car. The fire department proceeded to extricate her while we triaged the other students. Police also say they got numerous 911 calls, but what exactly happened is still under investigation. It was pretty much a straightaway in the crest of a hill. Um, it remains under investigation um, which vehicle was was in, in which lane and, and so forth. But the rugby team now just hoping the 73-year-old driver who's in serious condition recovers. I'm praying for her. Honestly, just, oh, my heart breaks. Worcester police say three girls report they were accosted by a man on their way to school this morning. The three separate incidents are causing concern among parents tonight as police are looking for the suspect. Our Olivia Lemon was following the story for us and has more. Oh my God, that makes it so much worse than it was because I didn't even, I'm, now I'm really worried about it. Parents of students at Sullivan Middle and South High School in Worcester are concerned. Wednesday, three girls reported they were accosted by a male on their way to school. Police say the three separate incidents happened within an hour of each other in a wooded area off of Apricot Street. There were two 15-year-old girls and one 14-year-old girl. Uh, the 14-year-old girl's school started a little later. She was the first one to contact police. Police say the location of the attacks is a shortcut students use to get to schools. Police say all three girls were approached from behind. The male had said that uh, you're going to be coming with me. All three girls had fought back and the men had fled back into the wooded area. Police say the suspect is described as a white male, possibly in his 50s with a white mustache. It could be very possible that it is one individual responsible for the assaults. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are working very closely to make sure that any information that could be available to the Worcester Police to hopefully uh, apprehend the uh, assailant. Worcester Public School Safety Liaison Rob Pazella says an automated message was sent home to parents to alert them. Police say there will be additional officers on scene tomorrow morning at both schools. Are you going to be a little more concerned tomorrow? Yeah. Or? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Olivia Lemon, Worcester News Tonight. An Oxford woman is facing serious charges. She was working as a certified nursing assistant when police say she took prescription drugs from an elderly woman. Amanda Pelliquin faced the judge Wednesday. She's charged with larceny after police say she took prescription pain medications from a 96-year-old woman. The victim was a resident at Brookdale Eddy Pond East in Auburn. Prosecutors say Pelliquin was caught on camera taking the elderly woman's medications. The assisted living facility says Pelliquin is no longer employed there. Pelican was released on $500 bail. Well, Dudley police make a drug arrest this week, confiscating prescription pills and thousands of dollars in cash. The suspect, a senior citizen. Our Brittany Schaefer has the details. Dudley police officers entered Five Day Road on Tuesday. It's here where officers say 76-year-old Angelo Tuccio Sr. was selling prescription drugs illegally. In the course of that thing, they confiscated upwards of around 100, uh, 100 pills, I believe, of uh, uh, various types, and also a uh, large quantity of cash, probably close to $40,000 in cash. 
Dudley Police Chief Stephen Weiner says undercover officers were able to purchase pills on multiple occasions out of the home. A month-long investigation led police to get a warrant to enter the residence. One of the good things with this case is to uh, stop the flow of uh, prescription medications going out to people that really shouldn't have them. As you see with the opioid crisis and everything we're dealing with right now and the increase in heroin use and things, these are directly related to that. Angelo's wife, Rosemary Tuccio, age 77, also lives in the home but isn't facing charges. Wayner says the investigation is ongoing. It's certainly something you don't see every day, uh, people, people in the, that age doing that, but uh, it, I think it goes to show that uh, these things can cut across all social, economic lines and uh, all ages. One neighbor on Day Road who didn't want to speak on camera says the Tuccios are sweet people and she is shocked the couple in their late 70s would be involved in something like this. Others in town seem surprised as well. I don't get what the purpose is. I would, I'm very surprised that someone at that age would have anything to do with drugs. I mean, it's kind of comical in a way, but shocking for sure. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. Federal, state, and city leaders welcome a new affordable housing complex to Worcester's Main South neighborhood. They cut a ribbon for the lofts at Loomworks Wednesday afternoon. The building was completely renovated to accommodate housing for 94 families. The complex includes affordable units. The work at the property created 175 local construction jobs. Pernay Family Health Services celebrates its 60th anniversary Wednesday. The nonprofit organization aims to help low-income families with emergency help, food, home health care, and more. Congressman Jim McGovern and Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito were just a few of the many in attendance at the celebration. Mayor Petty was also there and delivered a mayoral proclamation in honor of Pernay's work. Job here in the city of Worcester, uh, really taking care of individuals and family needs and, and mainstay in the community where they're located. Tonight's event was held at Wachusett Country Club. St. Cobain and Kenville Floor Company is helping to refinish the floors at the YWCA here in Worcester. YWCA says it's been more than 20 years since the floors have been refinished in the gymnasium and aerobic room. With more than 16 hours of activity each day on the floors, YWCA says they have seen a lot of wear and tear. St. Cobain donated the supplies needed to refinish the floors. The vice president of St. Cobain says it's nice to help an organization like YWCA who does a lot for the community. This came about through our employee involvement in the community and volunteering. They saw the need and we brought everybody together to, to help make this space a better place. It's going to be beautiful, functional. It was yellow, yellow, brown, and now it's beautiful white wood that's going to actually stay that color. St. Cobain has been working on the floor since Monday. They expect the final product to be finished this Friday. Well, still to come, we get a check of the local forecast. Plus, this week's snow is renewing concerns about the job Worcester's DPW does in responding to storm. That story's next. Stay with us. Worcester News Tonight, brought to you by Junction Shop Lofts. Luxury for rent in downtown Worcester. Welcome to Junction Shop Lofts, Brady Sullivan Properties' newest loft community, combining modern elegance with historic charm. Conveniently located in Worcester, Mass., Junction Shop Lofts boasts premier loft living with spacious one, two, three, and even four bedroom apartments. Our communities are pet friendly and complete with all the amenities you deserve. Move in today and the first two months are on us. Visit JunctionShopLofts.com or call to schedule a tour. He has delighted audiences in over 30 countries. His show has been voted the best family attraction in Las Vegas. The Popovich Comedy Pet Theater is a unique blend of classic style circus acts and the extraordinary talents of over 30 furry performers, all rescued from animal shelters. People Magazine calls it genius. It was just fantastic. It was amazing. Awesome show. It was a lot of fun. Our daughter loved it. He's very talented and it was so much fun. Popovich Comedy Pet Theater, coming April 9th to the Hanover Theater in Worcester. Get your tickets now. Hello, I'm Adrian Finley, Executive Director of Music Worcester, and I invite you to experience one of our upcoming performances. The Moscow Festival Ballet, performing Tchaikovsky's Swan Lake, Friday, April 15th at 8 p.m. at the Hanover Theatre for the Performing Arts. 
To learn more about this performance and many others, please visit us at musicwister.org. If you were injured in a car accident, would you call Joseph J. Cariglia? Absolutely. The insurance companies have lawyers on their side. You bet I want Joseph J. Cariglia on mine. Sure I would. Just make one call, let them deal with all the hassles. It's a smart choice. You don't pay anything unless they win your case. If I were injured, I'd want all the help I could get, wouldn't you? Don't stand alone against the big insurance companies. Call the law offices of Joseph J. Cariglia. What's the advantage of using the Advantage card from Price Chopper and Market 32? How about thousands of new deals and thousands of new lower prices? Like these weekly specials. 48 ounce containers of Pix Premium Ice Cream for only $1.99. And one pound containers of fresh red ripe strawberries, also just $1.99. Enjoy these savings and thousands more. The Advantage Card. More ways to save every day at Price Chopper and Market 32. Welcome back. A community-based approach to ending prostitution in Worcester. A forum in the city tonight worked to promote awareness. And as our Jennifer Zarate reports, there are services available to help women in need. Local organizations in Worcester are working to give sexually exploited women a chance at building a better life. It's a part of a community effort to combat prostitution. At a community forum Wednesday, survivor and advocate Nicole Bell says there weren't any support services available when she was exploited as a teen and continued on into her adult life. This time I started some support services for girls like myself and we have a drop-in center here and we're working closely with the police to get as many girls out and supported as possible. Bell received Worcester's 2016 Women of Consequence Award for promoting positive change in the community. She says women were often arrested, released, and then back on the streets, but now police are focusing on treatment. I think it's a huge step that the city is recognizing that these women are victims and are not out, out there by choice, and it's a huge step in the right direction. The Worcester Alliance Against Sexual Exploitation works with police and the district attorney's office. Ways member Athena Haddon says the focus is to help women. We understand the complex issue that these girls face and it really takes a community effort. And I'm very proud of what Worcester is doing as a community to help these women. The event was organized by students at the Springfield College School of Social Work. So two of our classmates, Kelly and Rachel, became involved in an initiative through Ways, um, which was kind of bringing um, the issue of sexual exploitation within the city of Worcester to, the, to, to light. Um, we realized that there was kind of an alarming um, discrepancy in the arrests in the city of Worcester. Andrea Howlett says their initiative is to address the community's perspective around sexual exploitation. It's really important. Um, us as advocates and as community members really need to focus more on helping. Students at Springfield College School of Social Work say research shows one in four girls before the age of 18 and one in six boys are sexually abused, increasing the likelihood of sexual exploitation by 75 percent. Today, these students are working to change community perspective. Jennifer Zarate, Worcester News Tonight.